it's not going to be speculators that are driving up the silver price in the end game. It's going to be physical buyers who are trying to get their hands on something real so that they can use it to exchange for goods and services because otherwise they won't be able to and the division of labor could break down. Please, God, let this be it, please. Hey guys, Rafi here from the Endgame Investor for this week's Silver Report for Arcadia Economics. And this week we're going to go into four different charts and we're going to do an analysis that is inspired by the Austrian School of Economics, by which I mean the Austrian School of Economics, the school that I subscribe to, sees economics as the study of human action rather than a series of equations like physics that can be used to predict the future with certainty or at least even attempted to do so. And so in that sense, you can't just use a chart to say, oh, a pattern exists. And because of that magical pattern, some magical thing is going to happen and this is going to happen next. Rather, if you can figure out a logical reason for a chart in terms of human action to appear the way it does, then it can be instructive. And so today I'm gonna to try to bring you into the human action, logical reasons for why certain charts look the way they do and why they tend to predict certain things not because a certain shape happens to be magical, but because it indicates a certain set of human emotions and decision-making. And this approach I think is especially important when everything seems to be in collapse from stocks to Bitcoin and even to gold and silver right now. But these charts tell a different story. So let's begin. This video is brought to you by Fortuna Silver Mines which just released earnings yesterday. And one thing I wanna point out about these earnings is their cost inflation outlook. And this company has been dealing well with the issues of consumer price inflation, which has been ravaging the planet and will surely get much worse very soon. It says here that the first quarter of 2022, the impact of inflation was below 5% of total costs. So Fortuna is managing cost inflation pretty well considering that the CPI, the lying CPI is above 8% and actual inflation rate is probably somewhere between 15 and 20%. And why is that? At the Lindero mine where diesel is the largest cost component, the effect of a rising price was partially mitigated by fuel hedges the company has in place for approximately 55% of consumption in 2022. So their fuel hedges are working. Fortuna is unhedged against silver, but it is hedged against energy and wisely so. So a question I have been getting a lot on the Endgame Investor and other people who are contacting me on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, is where is the bottom? Now, I do not know the holdings of every human on the planet and their individual value scales and decision-making processes. However, I do see this trapezoid forming in the open interest graphs on the silver trading floor. These lines I drew, this trapezoid shows a declining price concurrent with rising open interest. Now we've gone through open interest before on the silver report. What it means is how many contracts are open. So you've got to try to think logically about why open interest would be going up when price is going down. The reason open interest goes up is that buyers are opening more contracts and sellers are opening more contracts and not closing them out. And so the normal pattern is that when price rises, open interest rises with it because speculators are being attracted to the market as price increases and more contracts are open. And as open interest falls, contracts are closed out, the price falls. That's how it normally goes. So why would price fall but open interest rise anyway? It means that new buyers are coming into the market despite falling prices. The falling price is not scaring speculators out of the market as it was, for example, over here at this top where my arrow is circling. At this point, we had a top, price started to fall, and then buyers were scared out of the market, so they closed their positions and the shorts were able to cover at a profit. That is not happening anymore. 
more buyers are coming in and sellers are selling their contracts short and inch open interest is rising again, despite the price falling. There aren't many more weak hands in the futures market. This is the simple silver chart weekly in dollar terms. Now this line, this gray line across the screen here is showing what looks to be a triple bottom. We hit it here in looks like late September and here just before the turn of the year, it was around 2150. And we have broken below that line just slightly over here. Now, normally when you have a break of a double bottom there, that triggers a bunch of sell stops because that's how people trade generally. They have sell stops at double bottoms and when they are triggered, everything gets sold and those positions get freed up and price temporarily collapses. Except we've crossed this line and we've broken it, but there has not been a waterfall decline through it. That is called a marginal break of a double bottom. And if we cross reference it with volume down here, which is not particularly large, what that means is that there weren't many stops at this level. They've all been cleared out already, it looks like, unless the stops are below 2026 at the 200 WMA, which is possible. But you would expect that after a double bottom like this is breached, that you would have a lot of sell stops. If there aren't any, there aren't any more weak hands in this market. And I don't expect price to fall much further. And if it does, which is still possible, then that dip must be bought. This is silver in terms of the S&P 500. We've been lamenting silver's fall in dollar terms over the last few weeks. But in terms of stocks, it is not finding new lows. It's not even close. You have here, an, again, a marginal break of a double bottom for silver in terms of stocks. That happened at the turn of the year, and we're not close to it anymore, which means that as silver is falling, stocks are falling too. Everything is falling together because there seems to be the beginnings of another liquidity crisis. And when that happens, the Fed eventually has no choice but to print more dollars. And when that happens, silver explodes higher. And it's going to happen for the last time this time. This, I believe, is going to be the last liquidity crisis. Are we in it just yet? I cannot say for sure. But there is going to be one, and I believe it is going to be the last one before the world gives up on the dollar as a reserve currency and moves to gold and silver instead. Not because they prefer it, but because there is no choice. If dollars cannot buy anything, neither can any other currency, and therefore the only thing that functions as money is gold for the central banks and silver for the public. Now, besides the open interest divergence, there is another interesting divergence happening in SLV holdings. You see, there are two kinds of silver investors. There are those that use silver to accumulate dollars. Those are speculators and silver derivatives like SLV and silver futures. And there are those that use dollars to accumulate silver. And those are the physical buyers like us and Wall Street Silver and other real hard money activists. Those that use SLV to expose themselves to the silver price are using it to accumulate dollars. And if the holdings in SLV are falling, which they did over the last two days, a fall of 150 tons, this as the price is moving upward slightly from bottom over here. And that means that interest in SLV is falling because in order to keep it in line with the rising silver price over here, they would have to liquidate some shares and that means that demand for SLV is falling versus physical coins whose premiums are now, I think, 23% for junk, which is another post silver squeeze record. In the end game, as silver is going to rise, I don't believe we're going to see runs in the silver derivatives like SLV and PSLV even, and all those other ones. Interest in those ETFs as trading vehicles is going to wane and we're going to start to see redemptions in those funds, whether it be PSLV, SLV, SLVP, or whatever fund is out there, silver futures, these are all silver derivatives. We're gonna to start to see redemptions in these for people going to the physical markets. It's not going to be speculators 
that are driving up the silver price in the end game is going to be physical buyers who are trying to get their hands on something real so that they can use it to exchange for goods and services because otherwise they won't be able to when the division of labor could break down. So I asked the question, will SLV and PSLV and all the other silver ETFs, will they rise as physical silver price rises? Probably, yes, I'm not denying that. However, I'm saying that the interest in these ETFs will wane as the physical markets will take over. It happens over and over and over in history. Finance is not some magical pattern, reading tea leaves, sort of superstitious religion. It is a pattern of human behavior that repeats itself as finance is supposed to represent real resources and goods and services on the planet. And when you inflate the finances to lie about how much real assets are actually available on planet Earth, when the public figures out that the numbers are all fudged, everything falls together. There is nothing new under the sun. And eventually humanity is going to have to come to terms with that. And for some, it will be very painful. And for others, it will be a life-changing transfer of wealth. The clock is ticking for the Fed to pivot one last time, and they will. Our job is to hang on until they do. This is Rafi of the Endgame Investor coming at you with this week's Silver Report for Arcadia Economics, and I'll see you next week.